What's going on everyone? Today I'm gonna to be doing a full look at this software inventory lab for Amazon sellers. Now, the whole reason I'm doing this is because in the Facebook group I posted, hey, is there a software or any tool out there you want me to review or do a tutorial over? And this software one, hands down. The funny thing is, is that I've been using this since probably the latter part of 2017. I've just never done a tutorial video on it. So I'm gonna be giving a full in-depth look at the software and how I use it personally and why I think it's so important. But before I dive into the computer and really quick, the one hour call winner to the person who commented and liked last video is right here. Reach out to me on social media and let's set something up. And all right, so before I actually go over this, I kind of want to talk about who this software I think is best for. And you know, if you're new to Amazon and you're wondering, do I try this or not? Let me clear that up. So first I want to say, if you're doing any form of retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, I really think that this software is mandatory. It speeds up listing and it really does help. Now, the only people I really don't think this is for is maybe private label sellers or people who do wholesale where you really don't have too many SKUs, right? So there are wholesale businesses out there that operate very, very profitably off of maybe 10 to 12 SKUs. That might not be for you, but if you have quite a few SKUs in your inventory, I would say over 20. So that means that if you're a bookseller or online arbitrage or you know wholesale like myself, this software is very, very important. Let's go ahead and dive right into the computer. So I'm just going to be going over this as if you were to sign up, right? So there is a free 30 day trial. I do not have any deal for you guys past that right now. I will be contacting them to see if there is any promotional offer you can get because it is $40 a month and you know, obviously anything I can get, I will pass on to you guys. So the first thing you want to do, I think before you do anything is you need to figure out whether or not you want to hook up your Dymo thermal label printer. And this has a really nice integration feature in this software because you can literally just print labels after an item list and put your thermal label printer on. And you can do that right back in here. If you go to your settings, and then you go to your print settings, you can configure your Dymo with Inventory Lab. Now, I'm not going to be going over, it's pretty self-explanatory. You guys can see my printer settings right here, like the label height, the width I use, and all of that. But um, if you are having some trouble with that, definitely I will leave a link to a video uh, that I think is helpful in the description below. Now I will be coming back to these settings at some point, but the first thing I want to also mention too is I will be listing, I've got this stack of books over here and I'm going to be showing you um, how to go ahead and get that set up. But to make listing quick with Inventory Lab, what I highly recommend doing is buying some kind of scanner. This is a $50 scanner, I believe, off of Amazon. It's very cheap, and I do have that somewhere in the description below. You can check that out if you want. But the reason why you want this scanner is so you can scan the UPC codes of what you're buying into it, and I will show that for you guys. So what you're gonna do is, if you wanna list something, first thing you wanna do is you want to go over and click on list and prep. And I will be going over these tabs at the top here later on in the video. I don't use all of the tabs, but I will briefly mention how to use them if I don't actually use them myself. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, as you guys can see, I made a test batch here inside my Inventory Lab account. And what you can do is um, you can go ahead and just click on new batch. And these are the settings that are going to pull up. So the first thing is you wanna name the batch. And I like to name the batch off of wherever I got these items, date, and then that's pretty much it. So let's say it was Kohl's and then underscore and it was uh, 4319. Then you have if you are shipping from your address, but let's say you have prep service and there are prep services that will list things for you using your inventory lab account. So that might be beneficial. Let's say you're shipping stuff from their address. You can switch that up. But yeah, you can definitely change that around. Packaging type, individual products or case packed. Case packed, you're really not going to have to worry about unless you're purchasing in bulk from some kind of distributor or manufacturer. So right now, for today's example, we are going to keep this as individual products. Channel, you know, I'm assuming you're going to be selling these via the FBA business model. I don't really list anything merchant fulfilled. Workflow type, keep that on private. 
labeling preference. Now this is where I always change mine to FBA should label my items. However, I will label my items as necessary. So this means that those labels that the Dymo Thermal label printer prints out, that costs you 20 cents per label if Amazon does it for you. Now, if you're selling new items, some items will not need to be labeled. But if you're selling anything used or, you know, you're going to have to label these yourself or you're going to have to incur a 20 cent fee. And just for time purposes, I try to either let Amazon do it or just my items don't need it. Provide box content on so this involves with creating the shipment inside of inventory lab with your amazon seller account i don't really care about this because i will just create all of my shipments inside my seller central and i'll explain later on why in this video um, and then min and max preferences I will definitely touch on that as well, but you can just keep it like this. And then shipping method, LTL is the truckload and small parcel delivery is um, what we're going to be using. I try not to use LTL if possible because it's much slower. It will save you some money, but in terms of getting your items into Amazon, it takes much longer. So I say try and avoid that if you can. So what you're going to do is you're going to click create and then this pops up. So if you wanna ever create a new batch, you can but this is our batch right now. Now, normally when you're listing something inside Amazon, what you have to do is either type in the UPC or the item number or something like that. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to type in this book's UPC code. And what it does is it pops up the actual item. Now, sometimes if you were just to type in good to great, you would have to find your item yourself. But this, if you type in the UPC or barcode number, then it will pop up automatically. And what you can quickly see here is there's an FBA column, a used column, and then a new column. And all I really care about is the FBA column. We're just going to work our way down here. So tax code, and this is just how it's taxed in your Amazon account. I just have mine set as general. This is pretty great. You can quickly get through the battery and regulated process. So that's great. Um, so just click no battery unknown regulation. Now, really quick, let's say you bought seven of these for 25 cents. And so that will quickly populate that. I went ahead and I put garage sale as the supplier here, but you can put in whatever supplier you're getting it from. And this is great too, because I will show you a feature later on in this video of how you can analyze your supplier's profitability. Now, SKU, I actually got this from Reese Resells, where you're going to put your supplier, so, garage sales and then you're going to put the date of which you sourced it so let's say 4 10 19 and then lastly i like to put the cost and this way the reason why i put this is is when something sells in your amazon seller app you can quickly just glance at it and say oh i got this from a garage sale on april 10th 2019 and it cost me 25 cents so it's really easy to do that and then lastly is you can pick your condition now, normally on Amazon, you have to actually click on the listing to write in there, which I highly recommend. If you're selling anything that's not new, you need to be putting in condition notes. And the cool thing about this is, if you go back into your settings and you go click on default condition notes, you can set up condition notes that will automatically populate based on whatever condition it is. So this really isn't applicable to you if you are selling anything new, but if you are going the used route, that is the route you're going. This will save you so much time. And you can just go ahead and click used good. And then I have, okay, good use conditions. And this is for like CDs or something. And it will auto populate. Just go ahead and click save changes, boom, done. And then it will auto populate. And then that way, whatever condition the book is, you can, okay, this book is very good. It will auto populate that. And then this CD is good. It will auto populate that. So that will save you a ton of time. Now, the last thing I want to point out before moving on to the next item is pricing your items and the mins, the maxes, and what that is all about. So really quickly, what I like to do is it will pull the items by price over here so you can just click on this and it will pull that but obviously this is not new what you could do is you could open up this link in a new tab it will show you all prime offers which is where you're going to want to price your items now there really aren't any prime offers on this right now what i will do is i'll probably list this at like 8.99 since it's used or 9.99 since it's used i'm just winging this right now i did not look at this so based on the buy price we put in here at 25 cents we're looking at a buck 28 
profit. That's 196% ROI. So it's not a lot, but we did not pay a lot for it. Um, this is just an example. Now, as you can see right here, there's a min price and there's a max price. And I don't really fill this out, but let's say you have a repricer hooked up to your inventory lab, which what I use is if you go into your settings and you go into your integration settings, you can see that inventory lab has a repricer that automatically hooks up to your whatever repricer you're using. It has to be inform.co or it has to be this one over here. I used inform.co. As you can see, I have it connected. Um, inform.co is expensive and this is not a tutorial on that. I'm just going to tell you how it works and how I use this. I don't really enter in any min or max prices, but if you wanted to, you could. And then that way, when your repricer goes through your data, it would not lower or raise above those prices. What I do though, in inform.co, I set up repricing schedules based on ROI. So it might be, okay, less than, I do not want it going below 20% ROI. And the way it knows that is right here. It has my buy price and it can quickly calculate, okay, right now we're at 196% ROI, but it will go all the way down to 10 cents, whatever a 20% ROI is. Now this book really isn't a good example because it costs the profit so low, but that's how I use it. And it is very, very powerful. Now, like I said, I don't really recommend using inform.co if you're just starting because it is a little bit more expensive. It is 150 bucks a month, but it will save you so much time. And it's extremely powerful. One of the best things I use in the business. So yeah, you would just go ahead, you would click add to batch and what it would do is, so it would add that SKU and you can see, so it was one SKU, but we had seven of them. And then what it will do is it took, takes your total buy cost. So we had seven books that we bought at 25 cents a piece and total net profit, we made, a, what was it, like $1.25 a book. So right now, we're looking at our total buy cost is a buck seventy-five. Total net profit is $8.96. And it shows your average sales rank. So, you know, depending on whatever category you're in, you can really use this to help you make sure you're purchasing good things. You don't want to send in a box of CDs and your average sales rank is 500 K because CDs move so much slower than books. Now, if you were to send in a, a book box with an average sales rank of 500 K, that wouldn't be bad. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how, so this scanner, what you can do is, and I can't hook up this scanner to this computer because I use this computer for my screen sharing software, not for scanning stuff into inventory lab. What you would do is you would hook up your scanner to a Bluetooth area of your computer device, and then you would just scan this book and it would populate the ISBN or UPC in here and it would save you so much time as opposed to having to type it in. And when we're talking, if you go to a book sale and you have to do that a hundred times, that's going to save you some time. So once again, guys, like I said, I have to manually type this in because this is not my computer for inventory lab. So as you can see, it pulls it straight up. This book is ranked 2 million, so it's not very good. But what you can see right here is it lists all of the FBA prices and the condition. So let's say we're listing this in good, we would click on this. But let's say we were listing it on very good, maybe we click on the $20.50 one. Now, this isn't a video on pricing, but this book's ranked 2 million, so I have a feeling if it were very good, I would probably wanna list this at 15 bucks. And so what I wanna do is, you can just kind of see some of the stuff pulls up already. Let's say I bought 10 of these at 50 cents each. And let's say, okay, SKU is garage sale. And let's say we bought this on 410 again, same day, 19 and uh, 50 cents. And we're going to list this as very good. As you can see, I don't have anything that auto populates in my very good section, but you could definitely add that like I just showed you. Min and max, we don't care about that. Like I said, I set it up in my inform.co account. And right now you can see I have a net profit of $5.32 per book. And that's a 611% ROI. I will quickly add to batch. So right now we are at a total net profit on this shipment of $60. Average sales rank is about a million. That's not very good, but just for demonstration purposes, this is how I would read this data. Now, let's say you're done listing all your books. You're done. One really quick thing though I wanna mention is if you were to go back in here, you can quickly just go back in here and click edit. Let's say you forgot to add a 
book or something, you can just do that really quickly. And really, I want to add to I have my shipping set at 50 cents per pound, um, which is pretty typical. I feel like that overestimates a little bit. I like to do that. So shipping calculations into Amazon are calculated for this profit. And lastly, let's say you're selling some kind of grocery item or supplements, you can quickly add the expiration date here, which is amazing because if you've ever created a shipment yourself and you have to manually enter it in, it can definitely get time consuming. This is a great way to do this. And lastly, there are all these other boxes up here you can click on to see. You can check Google Trends. You can check the price on eBay really quickly. You can check the Camel, 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 the Keepa. The only thing I use is the prime comparison, which I used to use more often back when they didn't have these conditions listed. But obviously, I've not listed anything used in a little while. And now they're listing these conditions right here for you. Before, it would just list the new prime price. And if you're listing something good, you would have to go in and check, okay, what is this actually selling for used? And lastly, I want to say, if you do have a repricer, you could just put a buy price of 99 bucks. And sometimes you will see this on Amazon where you'll see something marked astronomically high. It will come in and it will make that price competitive. So if you really just want not even care about the price, throw in $99 buy price and it will come in and do its thing. There are some people who do that. You just need to formulate that into your strategy. That's pretty much it for listing. Now, in order to close out your shipment, what you're going to do is you're just going to go down here, you're going to click review batch, and then you're going to click submit. And it, what it will do is it will create the FBA shipment. I just want this sent to my seller central, my manage inventory section. So you're just going to click OK. And that's all I do. OK, so I don't actually create my shipment plan through inventory lab. And the reason being is that it divides up shipments quite often. And I'm not going to show you how to create a shipment in this video. That's not what this video is about. It's just showing you how to get them in your seller central with all of this data. You can get this data and then you just can create the shipment in there. You won't have to add the expiration dates. You won't have to add anything like that. It will collect all of this data for you and you're good to go. Now I'm going to move across the other tabs and talk about some things I use, some things I don't use. So this research tab right here for finding items, I don't use that. The dashboard tab, I don't use. You can find all your closed batches. So once a batch is closed out, you can go back here and just pull that data if you want. Right here, if you click on your inventory and your FBA, it will show all your FBA inventory similar to that of your manage inventory section in seller central i don't really go in there too often now the accounting section in here it is useful and i don't actually look at this data too often though this is nice for if you have a cpa and you can just give them access and they can log in here and get some of this data now for example something like reimbursements or refunds or something like that i just pull that data from my seller central if that's what they need it does make things nice and congregated in a nice easy to use place now the last thing i want to say is these reports this is something i think is amazing definitely something for you to look at so all of that information we were entering in the supplier it takes the category from which it is you can quickly go in here and see okay is what supplier is my most profitable supplier what asin is my most profitable asin and those are the two things i like to look at as a macro overview in my business and another cool one is if you click on inventory evaluation you can see what's active what's inbound your cost per unit, et cetera. It's very, very nice and easy to use. This is something I highly encourage. If, if you love numbers, this will be great. And the last thing I wanna point out is they do have an amazing support customer service experience, more so than probably any software I've ever used. Their response time is amazing. They have a chat system over here. If you just click on support, you can also send them emails. I've had some issues and they, I feel like they go above and beyond what customer service should do. So yeah, there's a free 30 day trial. If you have not used this yet and you are any kind of arbitrage or even wholesale person on Amazon, I definitely encourage you to check it out. So the guys, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and close out here. Let me know in the description below, maybe what software or tool you want me to review or drop a video on next. I'm open to these. If a lot of people say one thing, I'm definitely more than happy to do a video on that. And yeah, I will go ahead and end this here and I hope you have a great rest of your day.